Hi, I'm Mrs. Silver Fox. And I'm Mr. Silver Fox. And you're listening to the Silver Fox Swing Set. A podcast where we document our continued experiences in our own personal lifestyle journey. Welcome back, everybody, to episode three of the Silver Fox Summer of Sexiness. I'm Mrs. Silver Fox. And I'm Mr. Silver Fox. Welcome back, everybody. How are you this evening, Mrs. Silver Fox? I'm feeling pretty good. For as drunk as I got yesterday, I feel great today. I would say you have hung in there like a trooper. That's for sure. Thank you. That was was a wild night. It was a tough weekend. For a vanilla night, that is. Yes. Well, sort of vanilla. I did um, accidentally ask someone uh, (laughs) who was trying to place where she knew me from um, if she was a swinger. And she was real taken aback by that question. So the answer to that question was no. And I would not recommend when someone is trying to place you and you've named off every other thing saying, you know what, let's try this one last thing. Um, Are you a swinger? (laughs) (laughs) Because I will tell you one out of one times, the answer is no, they're not. (laughs) It's it's difficult to turn off the lifestyle (laughs) sometimes when you're drinking you have your beer belt on and we're around a crowd of very well-dressed sexy people yeah you heard it here first folks i wore a beer belt the beer belt in a really expensive bridesmaid's dress and it was one of the best fashion statements i've ever made (laughs) the photographer stopped me and asked if anyone has ever taken a professional picture of my beer belt and i said no and then she asked if she could so she got not just close-ups of the beer belt but she stood back and took a whole picture too well, coming soon. Coming soon. Brand <laughs> new photo. photo. <laughs> I, uh, I think we should put that on the website. I, if they're like up close. Pop, I'll agree to that. I think we should put it on the website. Yeah, I would love that. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, let's hop right into it. What have we been up to? Yeah, what have we been up to? Um, I think the last thing we talked about was our big pool party adventure. Right. Um, so. It puts us right into July, I guess. Oh, yeah. And I, well, no. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, after the 4th of July. We didn't do anything in the 4th of July. But right. then that first, uh, the first week in August, I actually had um, a fun little vacation for work training where I got to go down to Columbus for a week. I had some fun while I was in Columbus. Did you? I did. I had a, I had a fun lady visitor. I also went to, Champagne Club with a mutual friend of ours and his girlfriend. I had an awesome time there, too. That was really fun. I definitely want to talk about that some more with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I, too, had some activities while you were gone. You did have some activities. You were a busy bird. Right, but uh, I will say <clears throat> Mrs. Silver Fox was kind enough to line up one of those adventures for me. <laughs> <laughs> The best wingman on earth, I'm telling you. Listen, baby wants a unicorn experience. Baby gets a unicorn experience. (laughs) So, well, let's start with uh, your female visitor. How did that go? How was that night? Oh, that was that was amazing. I really like her. I in I enjoy females in a lot of. I feel like in a lot of settings. And we had a good night. We had like we had dinner. We you know we got to talk, and. Then we played fuck around and find out. So it was, a, it was a good night. We were on limited time, but we made really, really good use of that time. Excellent. And I mean, I guess work training was okay, too. I learned some things. I'm sure you did the things there. I was more interested in the uh, experience. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a, a unicorn stopover while you were gone on Wednesday, I believe. Had an amazing night with that person. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that experience, is for sure. Babe, when they show up, they show up. Yeah, wow. Amazing time. <clears throat> um, really appreciative that you set that up for me, so thank you, baby. Mm-hmm. Anytime. Uh, Champagne. I did not get the opportunity to go there. New club opened up in Columbus. Mm-hmm. Uh, not necessarily a new club. Uh, Champagne's been around, but... Well, and I think um, it was a different club before and just became something. I don't know. I can't keep up with all of the 
but I I have heard a lot of people refer to to it as the new champagne. I don't know if that means same owners, new location, or they were at this. I don't know. But this place was like state of the art, brand new, top of the line. Everything was gorgeous. I mean, huge dance floor. You think you can describe the layout for us? Like what was like walking yeah. through the door and then okay, all the way yeah. up to so, it. Okay, yeah. So there and actually, uh, I was there on a Thursday, and I don't know if they're still doing them, but they were doing Thirsty Thursdays where you for five dollars you it covers the membership and the event. Which you know, if you're in the lifestyle, you know that you just don't find events that are like five bucks to get in. They're typically anywhere from you know twenty to a hundred to get in. So I could not pass that up, and I hadn't seen it yet. But um, yeah, it's a uh, it's in like a big giant Quonset building, essentially. And everything's super, super open once you get past the, you know, the entryway stuff. And then the ease of where the rooms are at in relation to the rest of the place. It's like a giant open square and a like a wraparound porch kind of hallway. Okay. And in that wraparound hallway are... Uh, just a ton of rooms and some of them have windows and some of them don't have windows and they have doors and little, little ropes that you can put across the door so that people can watch. But you know, the little rope says don't come in. Everything was super clean. They have a really, really beautiful like makeup slash dressing room for the ladies. And yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was a really, really nice place. I'd love to go back. I'd love to go back with you. I would like to go back with you. You know I like the clubs. I know. So <laughs> I am definitely all in. Yeah. Want to have that experience, and I think it'd be fun with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the tough thing would be, you know, like, hey, let's christen this place. All right. <laughs> would you be down for that? Yeah. I'd be down for that with you. Yeah. I. I mean, hi. I don't know if you've met me before, but I'm Mrs. Silver Fox, and I like to fucking clubs <laughs> with the door open <laughs> in this room with windows. <laughs> I definitely want to want to play that with you. So let's move that forward. Yeah. We'll put that we'll in put the that swing. On, yeah, yeah. <laughs> put it in the swing forward file. We got to go back there. So after that, I had uh, another unicorn come over. And that was another amazing evening. And you guys had a chance to talk when you got home. Uh, you know what? That was... I wondered about that on the way home. If she was going to be here still. And I'm so glad she was. She was amazing. (laughs) Absolutely amazing. And she's wonderful to talk to. And it was just very like, I don't know. It kind of made everything like, (sighs) okay. I'm I'm glad to see you here. I'm glad you, I'm glad you had a good time. I had a fantastic time with her. Um, I still enjoy conversations with her. Uh, Just love the mental connection Mm -hmm. that, you know, you can share with people. Um, we, we say that on our profile that, you know, that's something that we always desire yes. is some kind of intellectual, mental connection with people. So really have had that with that person. So that's been a great, a great friendship that mm-hmm. we, uh, you know, have made, which uh, brings us to our topic tonight. Um, what is our topic this evening? I don't, you know, I don't even know if I have a name for our topic. I just feel like we've been having a lot of conversations where... We're doing a lot of kind of inward, like, reflection on the things that we, like, the things that we want, the things that we have experienced that we enjoy, things we haven't experienced that we think we would enjoy. And honestly, I really just want to do a podcast to kind of get those ideas out into the the metaverse. I think, uh, from my point of view, I look at it as more of, how we wish to define or how we can incorporate other people's design into our relationships as we move forward Mm -hmm. in the lifestyle. I think that's important to have the discussions with other people because points of view are always different. Uh, And yes, I do love hearing several points of view on the same thing. Sometimes it blows my mind that, you know, you can get a room full of people and ask them all the same question and that they're all every single person is going to have a different answer, but I love that. I do too. And there's some, some areas where we're expanding ourselves into where 
we have to start questioning definitions and terms and, Mm -hmm. you know, and do those terms mean the same things to the other people that we're with? And those are a little more tougher discussions, I would say, that we've run into uh, in a lifestyle. Like, how do we define our relationships and friendships and um, how do other people want to define their friendships and relationships with us and as well as others? And what does that look like for us? Yeah. I think a big part of that struggle just comes from, you know, relationship wise, I never really had a healthy relationship until I had one with you. So when there's, you know, situations with people where the relationship is more than just a surface level friendship and there might be something more to it, especially if we're going to exchange like a, a mental energy or a sexual energy. I think it's hard for me to look at those relationships in the right way just because I've never I never experienced those until you. I didn't I didn't know what that looked like. And friendships, you know, before we entered the lifestyle, all of my vanilla life friends were I mean, you know, I had a, I was in, involved in a lot of toxic relationships. So for me trying to start over at my age and find new friends, it's difficult because I don't know I don't know what a fair friendship looks like for me or for the people that I'm trying to make friends with. I think you and I share that commonality between us because mm-hmm. you know, when we met I was coming out of a very, very toxic relationship. Um, I really wasn't into relationships mm-hmm. per se. Um, prior to that and my friendships were more of when I quit drinking I lost a lot of friends Mm. you know so it was from that point in which we met each other and then moved forward and now as we meet new people we like in those friendships um, that we want to pursue what does that look like for us yeah you know, well, and for them, and what too. is our expectation of that? Yeah, and do we convey our expectations on our relationship to the people we want to have them with? You know, that's a that's a line that is very difficult to define from person to person, from couple to couple, from my point of view. Yes, no, I would agree, and it's it's hard enough to figure out what I value the most in friendships, and you know what my love language for a friendship is. And then also have to consider what someone else requires of a friendship and what that looks like for them. You know, it's it's almost it, it's like the four way elusive connection where it's something that's just kind of hard to find and and I struggle enough with it in my, in myself and well and I'm also very skeptical. I mean, I love people and I love chatting and I love I love meeting new people. I like making new friends and learning people's names and their life stories, but. I don't know. I feel I feel like sometimes I'm very skeptical of of people that want to be friends with me and what their intentions are. And I know that's something that I'm projecting and that's something that I'm working on. So that's I think that's a big part of my namely for females. I feel like I have a ton of male friends in the lifestyle cuz I'm I'm kind of a bro. <laughs> you know? I, I agree. Yeah, yeah like I, I fist bump, I talk shit, I you know, get a lot of masculine references. I dick swing. Right. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I'm like I'm the perfect bro friend to have. <laughs> I would I would have to agree with that. Yeah, for sure. You know, I find it a little more difficult to find friendships in the females. I uh, same. Yeah. And, and I don't know if it's uh maybe the wrong expectation I'm placing for myself or how I'm defining a relationship to myself, mm-hmm. but it's difficult to say what I want because it's hard to say what do I want and not put a definition to it. Mm. You know, like I very much enjoyed and continue to enjoy our friends, yes. you know, in that we have in the lifestyle. But when, when I say I want something more out of a relationship, you know, we really had to sit back and say, well, what is that? You sure. know, and what does more mean? What are lines to ourselves and what are lines to other people? And we kind of alluded to this on the last episode where maybe dipping our toe 
and me more personally than you, perhaps, but taking a look at what the polyamory side of the lifestyle looks like. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't want to lose certain friendships that we've made, you know? That makes sense. But I don't want to ask somebody to be exclusive to me Mm -hmm. in any way. I guess I'd want to be included in some way. And I think, too, because, you know, we've been so... You know, in a lot of ways, we're very fluid, but I feel like there's some parts of us, and, you know, we kind of talked about this in the last episode, too, that things that I say, you know, I'm very fluid, I'm easy breezy, blah, 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 but when it comes to certain things, I am a little bit rigid. Sure. There's some things I'm just kind of rigid about, and I think those things are changing and evolving, but I don't know, it's it's a process. Because, you know, when we started, I... I could not understand, like, what the appeal of having a girlfriend or, like, a consistent, I guess, side piece or friend with benefit um, would be to either one of us. Right. And I couldn't understand how that added value to someone's relationship. Like, I just didn't, because I didn't know. I just, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So I had (laughs) no idea how that... And to me at the time, you know, when we kind of first started out, I thought that's, that's kind of unappealing to me. And I think now I don't know that it's, I wouldn't call it unappealing. It's just, it's work. It's work. It's, (laughs) and I feel like you just, you have more, you have more patience and tolerance and interest even in putting that kind of work in. And I think that is the part that, that maybe scares me a little bit too. For me, not for you. Scares yourself (laughs) towards me or scares it towards yourself or, or both even. No, not towards you at all. More towards me. Like I, I could see, you know, the, the idea now of exploring like the poly, the poly side of this that maybe we really haven't gotten into is my biggest fear is I don't want to accidentally unintentionally or whatever hurt somebody's feelings. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to put someone in a position where they could get their feelings hurt. And that, that in itself is what scares me as I, I'm just afraid of hurting someone's feelings. Sure. And I don't mean like, you know, turning them into my girlfriend or boyfriend and then breaking their fucking heart. And like, I don't mean it like that, but you know, some people, the way they communicate is they want to get a text every day to know that the other person is okay. Uh, sometimes that looks like surprises or date nights or whatever. And if I miss one of those things or I'm not paying attention because, you know, because I'm ultimately kind of self-centered and also like you come first and uh, right. your home life comes first. I I don't want to not follow through on something that really means something to someone else because I know how I feel about love language. Well, and I think this is uh, an excellent exercise in communication with another person outside of yourself too. Mm-hmm. And I would say we're excellent communicators towards each other. And so, you know, how can that translate to be an excellent communicator with somebody else that I don't know as well? Right. You know, and how do I know that what I say is being conveyed correctly to that person? Yes. Where um, a common term that we hear a lot or a common phrase is, you know, catching feelings. Yeah. You know, and some people that's very... A no, no. Like as soon as that may even seem like a possibility of catching feelings, they move right on, Mm -hmm. you know, where other people, you know, such as maybe myself defines feelings as something else. Because if I, if I care for somebody, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm falling for somebody, you know, but, um, how is that perceived by somebody else? So I think the matter of communicating that correctly can be a little convoluted at Mm -hmm. times personally. Um, and that's a, I don't know. That's a weird subject to approach with somebody Yeah. at the same time. Like, Hey, you know, we, we play together, we hang out, we go to dinner, that kind of stuff. Like, um, 
you know, I genuinely care about you as a person. Is that considered feelings? Right. You know? Right. And do you want to even risk it because the relationship that you have, you enjoy very much. Mm-hmm. So does that line of communication need to be opened? I mean, I think ultimately just us talking to people that are involved in the poly community and that live that life and, you know, have the experience. I think just hearing those points of view from people and learning about it in that way, I mean, it's, it's going to come with little gems of information, you know, that we can pull like, Oh, that's a, that's a really good point. I never would have thought about. That's something that we should talk about. And I think, even with us just kind of dipping our toe in and learning more and talking to people that is going to make us communicate better with ourselves and with other people. For me, it's a question of, could you live in a certain way yourself and not be intrusive on other people? Like, so let's say we meet somebody we truly like a Mm -hmm. couple. We enjoy that couple enough where it's like, Hey, that's enough. Do you convey that to them or do you just live that way? I'm not sure what you mean. If you. So let's say hypothetically and not even us per se, but let's say hypothetically a couple meets another couple that's in the lifestyle Mm -hmm. and um, there was just such a great connection that they decide that they want to be exclusive to them. But do they have to tell them that or they just make themselves exclusive to them? It's an odd question, but I'm curious of the answer. Well, that's a brain scratcher. I feel right. like uh, I'm not saying we're that we're there with anybody. Uh, right? But no, no, no. I'm just um, curious. Can that happen? I mean, I imagine anything can happen. But do you tell the other? But I don't know. I feel like I'm the wrong person to ask. Sure, fair enough. I feel like if you you could ask a ton of different women, and they would say like, absolutely, open up that line of communication. And typically, I'm a very Let's open up that line of communication. Let's have a conversation. Let's ask a question. But also, when it comes to defining a relationship, like, where's this relationship going? <laughs> right. Are we exclusive? I have Without never been creepy, that girl. You know what yeah, I mean? I've never been that girl. I don't know. It just seems like you run into these different scenarios um, with people. And, um, you know, these conversations come up. This is something a little more serious than what we normally talk about on the podcast Mm -hmm. um, things that pop up behind the scenes that, you know, when we're constantly projecting our positivity, you know, we've had some experiences that have uh, not been positive, but led us towards a positive new road. Yeah. And so um, touching on these subjects are just conversations that we have in the background going constantly, the different phases that maybe you and I transition to, you know? um, Yeah. I've, I do feel, you know, I still cling pretty hard to us talking about kind of the fluidity of our dynamic. Right. And I think that's true. I think that's true all the time. I feel like I'm always changing within this lifestyle in myself and the way that I view it and the way that I think about it. And sometimes there, I mean, there's been a couple of times where I sat back and thought, okay, I think I might be all done with this. Like this, sure. this is a lot or this is not enough or this is too much or this is uncomfortable that made me think I'm, I'm just kind of fucking done with this. But then on the flip side of that coin, I've had some experiences where I thought, Oh, f- I'm never going back. <laughs> right. And for me recently, uh, you know, I'd say it's been a back and forth more with me than you as far as where I stood Mm -hmm. somewhere in the direction I wanted to go, because I, um, you know, I, I developed a crush in the lifestyle and that was something that has not happened to me. Yeah. And that was something, um, and we talk about this between each other that if we don't understand something or we're experiencing something new that we can't really define in a moment that maybe we should take a step back and look at it, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I took a big step back for a minute and needed to really digest, you know, can I, can I handle a crush in the lifestyle? Um, I've had plenty outside of it, but they were always, you know, easily removed Mm -hmm. from myself, but in the lifestyle. And there was no opportunity for any kind of, you know, energy exchange between you and those people. Correct. So I think those just, 
feel different. I feel very differently about crushes than you do. Uh, extremely different. I develop them easily. I carry them for a long time. They fade in, they fade out. Um, and I tell everyone that. I'm pretty open about that. Sure. And when I am crushing on somebody, I just tell them. And that, that includes both vanilla and lifestyle people. I just crush <laughs> my little heart out all the time. And I... I feel like if there's therapists that listen to our podcast, there's some things that they pluck out of what I say and think, oh, this bitch needs an intervention. Well, (laughs) spoiler alert, this might be one of those things. Um, Like the, the artist in me really in like, not just enjoys the crush itself, but I even enjoy when that crush falls apart and maybe my feelings get hurt a little bit. I don't know that that not heartbreak. I don't want to sound like no, hey, I'm not here Taylor Swifting, but like that little, like that little pinch that hurts a little bit that kind of humbles you and maybe makes you feel like shit and maybe teaches you a life lesson and maybe it doesn't. I like that feeling. I don't go out searching it, right? But when it's coming, like I. There's something so beautiful about that that I that I really like. Sure. And I know that sounds fucked up. With <laughs> with me, it was such a so rare. You yeah. Know, that it uh It surprised me even. That I said I had one. Yeah. Yeah. Me Which too. I was so excited for. <laughs> like, oh my god, yes, this is so great. Welcome. Welcome to the Crush Club. But after after a little bit of time, I became a little more uncomfortable with it because I didn't yeah. know what to do with it. Because, you know, you're admittedly very experienced with them, and I'm very inexperienced with them. So it just, it was something I wanted to talk about, Yeah, you know, with you especially. And we shared a lot of information back and forth. Like, hey, this is what I'm, I'm feeling at the moment. I'm mm-hmm. not sure... Um, what to do with it. And, you know, you were like, well, that's perfectly okay. You yeah, know, that's that's, per- jump out there and explore that shit, babe. This is great. And I'm just like, no, no, I don't want to, I don't want to go forward with that mm-hmm. at the moment. Like, I just kind of want to reel it in and see what I do with this, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that was important. I think that was important, but it really made me think about my lifestyle direction heading in a different way. Yeah. And, That's where the poly thing started to come Mm -hmm. in. And then as I read definitions, you know, well, maybe, you know, I don't know how far I want to go. Yeah. And maybe it's like the lifestyle where if you have a connection with another person, maybe you define that relationship like, hey, like you and I did the first time that we had our first serious chat on the phone. Like, this is what (laughs) I would like to be a part of. And are you willing to be a part of it? And that person's going to say yes or no. Yeah. And whatever Thankfully answer they me, give is you correct. Said yes. Right. <laughs> no matter how much crazy shit I said before, you could answer me. And I would think no matter what, what am- answer is given is correct. Yeah. You know, whether it be a yes or no on their part. Yeah. And I think that's the more approach that I want to take. Mm-hmm. And having a minor experience up to this point of recording so far. It's been very easy to talk to the person that's allowing me to have the experience Mm -hmm. where, hey, I'm brand new to this. This is what I think. What do you think? And are they in line? Yeah. (laughs) And I think that's that's pretty cool because that's where the communication part comes back in um, that we've developed very well that I get to share that with somebody else. And they appreciate that good communication. Yeah. And that kind of builds again upon our Mm -hmm. reputation. Like, wow, he's an excellent communicator with me. He's defining it very well. And, uh, you know, I enjoy that reciprocation on their part. Yeah. But it definitely gives you a a lot of accreditation and a lot of compliments from that said individual. Like, wow, you know, you communicate this way. That's wonderful. And it's like, yeah, you know, it re- really truly helps when you yeah. just spill the beans. You, Yeah, I love, I love spill your guts moments for sure. And I feel like you do make communication really easy. You you are a great communicator. I feel like we're very we're very lucky that we communicate the way that we do. I would say so. Yeah, I mean, it allows us a lot of freedom. I mean, look what we do. <laughs> For sure. That's I literally just from you know, well, and I think too that we're really getting to a point of just knowing each other and knowing 
our boundaries and kind of allowing ourselves to, I don't know, to be less stringent on the rules that we used to think were really important. I I think so. I mean, just from our conversation earlier this evening, um, may I talk about that just a little bit? No, absolutely. So, um, you're, you're going on, um, a date tomorrow for your experience Mm -hmm. with a gentleman. And originally I had put let's, a, let's call a spade a spade. I got a hall pass, bitches. And <laughs> I have been holding on to this fucking hall pass for, I want to say like three months or something. Uh, I've been talking a to long this time. guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've been, the anticipation build is completely insane. <laughs> so, you know, I originally had put a time frame on that mm-hmm. for some reason. And. I thought about it like, why does something have to happen in my time frame? You know, it's not yeah. my experience here. You're limited to this and you only get it during that. And I thought, well, that's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go ahead and remove that restriction. But I also got to know that individual in the time. That's true. You know, I would think if I've never met him before, the time frame makes sense for your safety. Yeah. But getting to know the person up to this point was like, okay. You know, I'm a little more fluid with it. So yeah. I've met you. You've been in my home. I trust you. You've been out with my wife several times. Like, you know, okay, you guys yeah. go have fun. He's a solid You guys dude. go have fun. And plus, I also want that reciprocated as I experience some of my relationships, mm-hmm. you know, moving forward. And I think that's important. I think that's important for ourselves. And I would recommend it, um, you know. That if you're going to place a restriction on someone, that you have to place that same exact restriction upon yourself. Yeah. And if you don't want that restriction, you've got to remove it from the other person. I don't know. Maybe maybe somebody else could say that, hey, our relationship works different, and that's yeah, fine. Yeah, no, and that's perfectly fine. But I, but I for do us, appreciate, I think it's, yeah, that reciprocity for me is important. And I, I think it is, too. And, you know, maybe in the moments that I haven't had an experience that you're lining up or something that because I don't fully incorporate it into myself, it's just, Hey, this is just a pure emotional response to this question. Yeah. And then when I actually have some time to think about it and then like, Oh, okay. I want an exploration in that arena myself. Do I want that restriction? Because every right it, it's going to be placed on me. Right, right. The nuclear <laughs> option's always on the table. <laughs> right. And I would have to do nothing but agree. And well, and it's a lot of times I find in just in our lives, but also in the lifestyle that as far as the whole let's make a deal thing goes, sometimes for me, it's a lot easier to just make a deal right in the beginning without even playing let's make a deal. Like, <laughs> here, this is good for this goose. It's good for this gander. Right. You know. And and we all go on our merry ways. I think that's a brilliant window of communication you have with me. You know, right off the bat. Like, yeah. hey, what do you think about this? <laughs> and then like it, I do tend to be very forward when I ask when I ask a question. <laughs> I don't know. I just got home from work. Can I have a second? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm gonna need an answer pretty soon. <laughs> but I think that, you know, I really like to say that you know, and I know we're gonna keep evolving. I know we're gonna keep growing. But I do feel like we found a comfortable foothold in this lifestyle where, perfect example, house party mm-hmm. last weekend. Yeah, we got to talk about that. We went to a banging ass house party. Always a good house party. I fucking love these people. They, they take excellent care of us. Amazing house party. We met a ton of new people. We did. Um, there was a lot of people there that we already knew. Mm-hmm. Um, and... We are going to come to this bullshit right now. We are going to talk about it. Uh, (laughs) There were a couple of encounters between you and between me that happened completely separately that we didn't have to have a conversation about because we had already touched on the conversation. What if this happens at the party? What if this? What? And not even what if because you don't like the what if game. But, you know... On on the way to a party in the day the days prior, you know we're kind of where's your head at? How are you feeling? Um, what happens if somebody wants to play separately? And I kind of feel like we're so comfortable there that we just we just kind of go with the flow. I like the pre discussion of yes. where your head's at, but I more appreciate in the car ride when we get you know, 20, 30 minutes into a car ride 
and somebody just looks to the other one, where's your head at in this moment? Yes. Are we still on the same page as we're going to play separate if it's on the table for Mm -hmm. these individuals or whatever you guys decide? You know, for us, it was certain individuals like, hey, if this happens, then, you know, you have my permission. Please go have that experience. Well, and I think, too, because there was a I, one of those individuals I was super surprised by. <laughs> and I feel like we didn't necessarily have that conversation, even though you have talked about endlessly the things that you would do to her. Um, <laughs> like, I didn't feel weird at all walking in and seeing that happen like oh my god for you know the on the inside on the outside i tried to be very joe cool like oh hey i'm just in here for my robe sure but on the inside i was like yeah yeah (laughs) you fucking did it yeah she's so hot (laughs) that worked out well and i got to slip in there and play a little bit too you did i had a busy night that night yeah i was very gay that night okay do you want well until until like two thirty, sure, or two o'clock. Oof. Well, let's. Uh, I don't do know you want to? You want to run was. through a quick recap of the evening? Um. Yeah. Sh- a short and sweet. Let's talk about all the mega hot, mega friendly people that we met there. New Can, people. Yeah, mega sexy people. I had a great time meeting everyone. I. Oh my god! I was such a lesbian. I got to use my strap on. I was there. It did not. I need a regular strap on. Like th- even you got mad and looked at me and, and said, that's it. You need a regular strap on. I couldn't get that thing to stay in me. I'll tell you the problem was I was too slippery and too kegly, which typically typically isn't a problem, but it was a problem in that moment. Still wonderful time. 10 out of 10. It was something on the last swinging forward that we had mentioned but I don't feel like it was enough of experience to check it off. Yeah, no. But it was still super hot to be involved with you using a strapless strap on. Yeah. And then I had a wonderful time. Yes. Proceeding that with you. And then actually you left the room at some I did. point. And just I felt like I wanted both of you to just experience each other without me. Yeah, I, you know what? I used this today and I'm going to use it again because it feels like a really good descriptor like sometimes because i like women so much i kind of feel like this is so weird but i don't care it's that it's a great analogy and i'm just gonna come out with it i told mr silver fox today that sometimes i feel like the annoying little sister that shows up demands that she can play with a toy and everyone just gives her the toy because she's the little (laughs) sister and i I don't always want to take your toys. And I don't mean that in a way to sound like, you know, to, to describe women as playthings or objects or whatever. You know, I'm not trying to make a fucking political statement. So everybody calm your tits. But <laughs> like, I don't want to be the person that takes every experience from you and makes it ours or mine. And a lot of times when I jump into the mix, when there's another female, I just steal the fucking show. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> All right. My point of view on those situations are perhaps from a different perspective. So I'm going to I'm going to share my point of view. OK. Um, a lot of those experiences that you define, I don't want to do that. I very much enjoy your involvement. Very much enjoy. And stealing the show is fantastic because you know, one, my, my sole goal is not to earn a complaint, you know, True. that's, that's number one, like, Oh God, yeah. I just don't need her to complain about me, <laughs> you know? And like, <laughs> like, I don't need a five exceed. star review. I just don't want to complain. I really want to be underestimated and overachieved every time. You know, that is yes. my goal. I don't want to brag in that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. I don't want to, you know, set expectations. I can't live up to, you know, that kind of stuff. Yep. And, uh, I think that's very important. I love that about so, you. So, you know, I want to go in a little underestimated and I want to highly overachieve. Mm-hmm. That's a satisfying thing. But when you come in and you have that experience and they get something completely different from you than me, I don't look at it as stealing the show. I look at it that person is getting at least 
a good enough experience, an amazing experience from you. I know I'm, I, I know I'm, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to say I'm out there just, you know, killing it and, you know, every, sound like an asshole, but, yeah. um, at the same time, I'm having pretty good sex with whoever I'm with, Yeah. but it's completely different when you see two females together. They kiss different. They feel different. Their skin is different. Mm. It's completely different uh, from me. So You're I don't me look at it as real fucking bad right now. Right. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't look at it as stealing the moment. I look at it as that person is enjoying a additional experience. That's so. That's and fair. I'm enjoying too because. The I'm a very visual person. You mm-hmm. know, I, I know love that. the visual thing. So, yeah, seeing two females enjoy each other to the extent that I get to witness it, because you are very into that, um, I get to witness your pleasure in that, and then the other females' experience. Just being able to step back and watch that is, you know, very very stimulating to me and it's not taking something from me it's adding something to me okay and to my experience in the evening you know so soft swaps have never been a problem because they're very enjoyable you know so i'm glad and all i wouldn't really care if soft swaps were a problem i fucking love soft (laughs) but you know i love it I do, I do enjoy the full play yeah. when we make that connection, but I very much enjoy any experience that I'm involved with. At the house party, when I was with the one gal where you came in and then joined, it was something, one, I invited. So you can't take that for yourself. Yeah, I asked true. if you wanted to join. And so initially you were a little hesitant and then you saw who well, I, I didn't was with. it was because right. it was dark and I was just like, no, <laughs> babe, have a good time. And that was somebody that I have liked for a oh, my very God, yes. long time. And I honestly have had plenty of opportunities to get to know her. So I would know I was so glad for that. And I didn't, I couldn't tell who it was at first, but when. She lifted up her face, and I saw her face. I thought, oh, fuck. They're, they're, okay, close the door. Bye. Bye, everyone. Busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unusual to close the door. No, actually, the door was wide open. Oh. No, it was wide open. Oh, someone open. else closed the door. You're right, you're right. Okay. You closed the door when you left. Oh, that's While right. you were in there, that door was wide open the whole time. Oh, God bless me. And then when you left, like, you know that I like some experiences mm-hmm. for myself out there in the world that's true you know i enjoy that and that was one of those that you you knew i was drinking enough that i can't believe that i was that thoughtful but hearing you say it it must be the truth so you know well you turned around and you gave me that look and then you kind of winked at me and said have fun and then you shut the door so i appreciate that you were at least cognitively aware enough in the moment to know oh yeah i really wanted that experience for myself with that person and, and, and I, I think hope I have many more. Oh my but, god. Oh my god. Me I, too. I adore that's, them. Uh, <laughs> so. Love them. Yeah, and I that gave me an opportunity too to go off with um friends of ours that we've only ever played with together. And I kinda got to play Unicorn and that was super, super fun. I was I don't want to say surprised was the word. I was super excited. Yeah, and that was cool. Kind of a little like, oh no, I missed that. That yeah. Oh my god, she's and so it, you fucking know hot. The, <laughs> I mean, every time we have sex with them, it just feels supernatural. And I don't mean like a fucking ghost. Like <laughs> it feels very organic. It feels like we've been having sex for years and years. Um, but being with them as kind of like an additional unicorn was something that was very. That was that felt really cool. Like not I don't want to call it special because that sounds hallmarky as hell, but it was different because I instead of us being four people that are connected together and kind of like duplo blocks coming back together in different ways. Sure. It was like they they were already their thing. They were having their sex and including me. So it was it was it hit different. I think that's pretty awesome. It was really cool. It really was. But again, another another couple, we would probably really never have to have a conversation. If I came home from work like, hey, this oh, happened right. with them, yep. I'd be like, wow, awesome. Please go on. And that's what, honestly, when I suggested that we all go hook up, he was like, I kind of feel like, 
you got to check in, don't you? And I was like, nope, it's you guys. And he's busy. And let's, <laughs> I mean, you don't tell me that your wife hasn't had an orgasm all day, knowing how much I love giving her orgasms. Like you just, <laughs> that, that's a fuck around and find out. Yeah, don't, that don't seems say like that to me. We're not going to just leave with one orgasm. Yeah, no, no. And there's going to be multiple there. That was awesome. But right, it really spoke volumes to me, though. Um, you know, and by far your night wasn't over, but on our car oh, ride home, true. you know, it spoke a lot of volumes towards where we were in the lifestyle mm-hmm. that these experiences could happen. And it wasn't a problem. We yeah. knew it. We we had that trust. We had that fluidity. Well, and, and we found kind of moments to kind of check in with each other. Because, sure. I mean, we really did act like two single people, except when we came together and, and the times in between play sessions right. where we found each other. Right. Which, I mean, I still really love. Everyone knew I was with you, so it didn't matter. Right. But your night wasn't over yet. No, my night was not over. So we were... You wingmanned me. I did. You I I me. I reversed roles. Typically, you did. Mrs. Silver Fox is the wingman. I'm a not a wingman. The best fucking wingman. And combine that with the fact that earlier I said I was a bro. Listen up, bros. Make friends with me. Let's go get bitches. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually had talked to you. You had expressed your desire for this gentleman that was at the party, and he was so fucking hot. He had a great smile. <laughs> he did. He, he was very funny too. Hilarious. And Thank so, you. So um, I decided that hey, you know, I've had an amazing time tonight with a person that I really have been longing to experience, mm-hmm. and you're really desiring this experience with this gentleman. I thought. Well, hey, I'm going to contribute. So I dove in and... You came out of nowhere. He had said something and... You challenged him. He said something about my robe and said that it was Correct. pretty and that he'd love to peel me out of it. And you literally looked this man that you didn't even know square in the face and said, so why don't you fucking peel her out of it? Yep. I called him right out on his And shirt. like fucking <laughs> just dropped the fucking mic and walked away. And yeah, no, I turned around at the door and I looked at you both and I looked him right in the eye and I said, you have my permission, whatever you want to do moving forward in the night, as long as she consents to it, you can, you guys can have at it. And Thank I, God for that. And I disappeared. That's a fucking, <laughs> that was a great time. That was, I'm so glad that you, cause I was not going to make the move and I don't think he was going to make the movie there. I thought he was being a perfect gentleman. He really I mean, was being he was a perfect really, gentleman. You know, killing it. And I just wanted to get fucking beat up. I'm going to tell you, gentlemen, if you really want to talk to Mrs. Silver Fox, if you can make her laugh, that's the best advice I can give anyone. Yeah, you're pretty much it. (laughs) Make her laugh. You'd be surprised how how many women out there really enjoy a guy who can make them laugh. Yes. That's honestly one of the very first things. If you can't keep up with me with wit... At least be fun. You got to be funny. If you're funny, <laughs> you're pretty much in. Save the six pack abs. Although, no, now, let me take that back. <laughs> I mean, please also respectfully approach if you have six pack abs, <laughs> but also be funny. But if you can be funny, uh, that's that's my biggest thing. Make me laugh. <laughs> that's important. He did too, and that was a fucking great decision. I did spend the next day with a bag of frozen peas between my legs. Was that from the violent scissoring or the bull at the end? Fuck. Honestly, <laughs> I'd like to say it was just the violent scissoring, but he tore my shit up. <laughs> I love that. We I, had a wonderful ride home the next yeah. day. Yeah. Um, really had amazing experiences. The night went. Mm hmm. Nowhere we didn't plan for no. anything. And to it be went honest. It, we planned for it to go nowhere. It went everywhere. Yes. And it was wonderful. It really was. I do. It I really lo- was. I, I mean love them. They're such great hosts. Amazing people. Ten out of ten. Every house party is a yes. It has to and be. And even if that. that means I spend the first part of my day photographing a wedding and then bust my ass to make the two hour drive to their house to get there in time so that not everybody's fucking and we missed all the best parts. <laughs> that's what I will do. Cause that's literally what I did on house party day. Well, 
and you came from an hour north to get here yes. to go two hours south. Yes. So it was Worth a heck it. of a day. 10 out of 10. Um, <laughs> I did drive home the next day. And I thought that was Oh, fun. God. I had a terrible headache. I was yeah. so dehydrated. I drank so much beer. Oh, we did not sleep a lot. No. We did not sleep a and lot. And I lost a lot of fluid. I mean, I finally <laughs> saw 4 o'clock. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I saw 4 a.m. before I got back in the bedroom. Mm. You had it tied up for a little bit. Indeed. So <laughs> that was that. a good time. <laughs> but yeah, that um, that was really a fun exercise in how well do we know each other mm-hmm. when we're being asked questions in separate rooms and then we have to face each other at the end of it. And the answer is literally that's... I think we did very well. We did. Yeah, everything was perfectly fine. <laughs> perfectly fine. <laughs> Now, tying that back into our conversation on defining our relationship, we have had an amazing relationship with those two hosts Mm -hmm. since we joined the The, lifestyle. Yeah, at the beginning. And we had used that as maybe as a metric towards other relationships. I think that spoiled us because we felt that instant four-way connection with them at our very first... Well, what we count is our very first event at Euphoria. It was our first hotel takeover. Yeah, you know, that, at least. that instant chemistry between four people kind of, it sort of fucked me up for future, uh, you know, because <laughs> you hear about elusive four-way, elusive four-way. And we say it more often now than we did in the beginning, because in the beginning, I really didn't think it existed. You know, and how did we define that relationship versus other people we had met? And how did we want to define those relationships started mm-hmm. becoming questions, you know, and we just kind of figured other people have to have these questions, too. Yeah, the, you know, we can't I, be the only ones having these conversations. When I play with these people, is that going to be the last time? I really like them. Mm-hmm. You know, do I want to explain that or do I just want the play session? And, you know, then it's kind of like we'll go with the flow after that. Oh, something funny that I... Had that I made someone text me so that I would not forget it that I want to bring up <laughs> is one of the most amazing terms that I've ever, ever heard anyone use in the lifestyle. This was a first for me. Yeah, same. And I think a lot of people at the table, too, because they said, wait, what? We overheard a conversation where she said, I am a fucker backer. And several people kind of looked at her and said, what is a fucker backer? She says, well, if somebody fucks me good, I fuck them back good. I'm a fucker backer. And I thought, that, number one, I need a fucking t-shirt that says that. Number two, that's one of the best things I've ever heard. That's great. I love that. I like nice ladies that are fucker backers. I love a fucker backer. Like, oh, I'm interested in exploration in a fucker backer. You're a fucker backer? I'm a fucker backer? We're all just... I'll just fuck her back or that. Here. That is fantastic. <laughs> but one of the best terms we've come across so far. Amen. Loved it. <laughs> and I feel like we're adding that to the website. We need that. So, so yeah. How do you want to tie this all up? Our, our topic for the evening? Um, um, I still don't even know what to call the topic. I think we honestly had a lot of ideas about this conversation we wanted to have and needed to get it out there. And, you know. Not everything all the time can be this, you know, rainbows and butterflies and the swinging lifestyle and things that come with it. And, you know, I kind of feel like even the conversations that don't make sense while we're having them that we're still trying to figure out or that are sometimes uncomfortable are are kind of important to talk about, too. I think so. I feel like there's other people having the same conversations and maybe feeling like like they're alone in what they're thinking. Yeah, and it's, um, I don't know, when we hit these crossroads, I imagine one partner feels a different way than another partner, and you and I discuss that, where you say, you know, your feelings are valid. Mm -hmm. Um, I do acknowledge them, but I just don't feel the same. And that's that's perfectly fine. I like those discussions because it presents a different perspective, but um, there are times where we just hit two different directions, and I appreciate that you take the approach you do with me. I I mean I do I I always want you to know that your feelings are valid and recognizing them as valid and as your feelings doesn't mean I have to agree with them 
Um, it just means that I have to recognize them. And I think that does tie all back into just communicating in the best way we possibly can sure. every single day in, you know, in our real lives and in, in the lifestyle. Not that that's not real, but. And I think that communication uh, for our friendships, you know, uh, talking about ourselves where we want to go with those individuals and then, you know, expressing it to them after that is important. Yeah. Or maybe even, you know, prior to that, like, hey, this is where, uh, you know, we'd like to go. Does that bother you or not? And if it bothers you, then, hey, let's just, you know, move whatever direction you guys want to go. Yeah. No, for sure. I agree with that. You know? um, but wonderful discussion. By no means does this uh, solve any issues or. No, I, I don't know if that there but were I think, issues I hope it to in, solve. No, I just think uh, an inspiration of a conversation towards other people other than ourselves is somewhat important. Maybe we had the opportunity to do that in this subject. We're still navigating the water. So I imagine this will be the first of several revisits as we yeah. head down the road. So um, speaking of what are we going to do swinging forward? I need to get a regular strap on. I can't have mm-hmm. the kind of embarrassment that I had at that party when my, my dick just would not work. <laughs> I can't, I can't live that. If, I can't live that life. I got to get it together. There's things I can do easily to take care of that problem. I, I like the exploration and a real strap on. I mean, even though what I witnessed was super hot, I think you were the only one that was embarrassed. It wasn't bothering anybody, uh, but you, Oh, that makes me feel really good. You Thank know, you. because, uh, I think everybody that was in that room thoroughly enjoyed what happened and what proceeded. Yeah, so, that's, I mean, I still had a good time, but I just felt kind of silly that I couldn't. I mean, me and the I other gentleman keep my penis attached. just kept saying how hot that was, that's, you know, why it was going so on. I was so focused on my penis. <laughs> right, but I'm a man brain. I can do like five seconds on loop. If sure. you got at least five seconds in there that was enjoyable. Then we're good to go. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, I can make that into a gif. We're good. <laughs> You know, so put that fucker on loop. Done. <laughs> Logged away in the memory bank. Like that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right, swinging forward. For, oh yeah, yeah, swinging forward. Um, really looking forward to my hall pass experience coming to fruition. Mm, okay. We've flirted long enough. You have. Um, and I'm really looking forward to finding out where where this poly exploration goes and what that looks like for other people and what that looks like for us together and what that looks like for us maybe separately. Like you're, you're interested in how it looks from your perspective, like your, your pursuance of it or specifically kind Um, of what I'm surface exploration right now. And yeah, I'm, I'm interested in watching your, your exploration of it right now. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm pursuing something like that, but I am open to, I'm open to the idea of it. Open that it could happen. And maybe, maybe poly is the wrong term. Yeah. You know, that's also under consideration too. And I guess it's just defining a relationship and the necessity to have to put terms to things yeah. is kind of weird to me, but mm-hmm. um, at the same time, I'm entering a different arena and I'm very interested in it. And I'm very interested in the person that's joining that exploration with me at the moment. It's weird how things can change, isn't it? <laughs> it's weird, but not, not for us. I don't feel, I feel like everything's, <laughs> we're always changing. Also swinging forward. Um, we're heading towards a Halloween Pretty quick. Oh my gosh. I'm looking forward to so, so Halloween stress. events. Where are we going to go? Who Everywhere. knows? Everywhere. We're elusive as hell. Everywhere. So. <laughs> I'm going to go to all the places. I have two outfits ordered right now. Two? Yeah. Okay, so maybe at um, least two places. To be fair, one of them is specifically to wear for my hall pass because it's his thing. Oh. But it can also be reused as a Halloween costume because it's a whole outfit. It's not one of my things, is it? No. It's so far removed from any of your things. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> I appreciate Come off that. It. <laughs> no, I'm going to be one of your things for the Halloween thing that we do together for at least mm, one of them. I can't wait. I'm excited about that, too. Me, too. I'm so, glad you're done being a little crybaby bitch about Halloween costumes for bald guys. I, uh, I still don't. I still don't appreciate your tone. It's 
you're looking at it all wrong. I feel like right now the tribe that we are building, the people that are in, I don't want to say like in that, in that tribe because I don't think we know what our tribe looks like yet. Right. But the people that we're it's developing. Starting to take shape. It's yeah. Starting to take a little bit of shape. Yeah. The people that we're developing really strong friendship with friendships with, I feel really comfortable in those friendships. I do too. I do too. Um, when I got to a little bit of place where you were talking to me about the lifestyle, you know, you'd pointed out some of those friendships to me. Yeah. And I where felt they like were, you where needed a reminder. I did. I did need a little bit of a reminder and you know, the house party, seeing some of those people mm-hmm. and, um, seeing some other people that we had hung out with along the way yeah. had really rekindled that for me. Yeah. And um, I'm happy. I'm very happy where we're at at the moment. Me too. And I'm not a I'm not a greedy person. I don't need more, but I love new experiences. Same. So I'm looking forward to all the new experiences heading our way mm-hmm. and being able to share that with people. And who knows, maybe we find new terms to define things we're doing. But at the same time, I love this fucking roller coaster life I we're do love on. This fucking roller coaster. <laughs> it is amazing. Yeah. So why don't we uh, why don't we tell people where we can find you? Where can you f- we find you now? Um, I'm Silverfox79 on Cassidy.com, where I'm also a certified photographer through them and uh, ambassador for Lifestyles Lifestylers Magazine. Uh, I am also Silverfox79 on Swing Towns. You may or may not be able to find me on TikTok. I'm on SLS as <laughs> Silver Fox 79. Um, I'm on Swinger Zone Central. I'm also Silver Fox 79. And I do want to remind our listeners that if you want a discreet way to communicate with us, you can email us at silverfoxswingset at gmail.com. We won't share that with anyone, but um, if you have something you want to talk about, um, you want to take us out to eat? You want to you want to buy us some drinks? You want to make out? You can send us an email. <laughs> you can uh, reach out to us on our different platforms. And I do remind our listeners, we have our brand new website, silverfoxswingset.com. You can catch all the latest episodes, um, our latest partnerships. And uh, we are having a blast yeah. out there. So, as you always say... <sighs> I can't please everybody. I'm not a pizza. No expectations. Honestly, if we just make out and play Scrabble, that that would probably be fine, too. Between us and the Silver Fox Wing set, you're a fucking liar. I am. You want to get railed. I fucking love you. (laughs) I know you better than that. (laughs) She said Scrabble. Nah, that bitch wants to get railed.